good afternoon everyone i am vishwesh uh, working for nvidia as tech lead uh, i am madhusudan working as a senior software engineer at nvidia we have a third speaker uh, but he could not uh, make it to this presentation because he is he works from us uh, rajat chopra So today we are going to talk about uh, Kubernetes Federation at each. Uh, we will also uh, talk about the AI deployment uh, to the edge clusters in the real world. Let, let me start with the agenda quickly. So for the agenda, first we need to understand what edge scenarios are we looking at and what are the type of issues uh, that we would encounter and what we are actually trying to solve. So first we will start off with that and we will also explore what are the different kinds of workloads that is different from what runs at the edge and what runs in a regular kubernetes server which is probably hosting microservices. We will also look at how the kubernetes setup at edge is different than the regular kubernetes which we do on our on prem or cloud data centers. Uh, we will have a very high level overview about the cube federation architecture suitable for the uh, edge we'll also explore challenges and the solutions that you know we have encountered and we have solved uh, respectively so you're going to see all that soon so let's start with a few edge scenarios yeah uh, quick show of hands how many of you are familiar with the edge compute or edge clusters nice uh, i can see a couple of hands so Edge clusters are generally uh, set up on the customer premises. For the AI functional, uh, functionality, you have to set up the edge devices or edge clusters at the data sources. And why do we need to do that? Look at this edge scenario, this traffic signal. Do you see that it's a right candidate for the real-time analysis? Let me give an example. Let's say an ambulance come. Traffic signals are meant for the traffic flow. And if the signal is red and ambulance is there, will this traffic signal be able to take the intelligent decision, uh, stop the other direction traffic flow and let the ambulance go? Well, uh, let's look at a different scenario also, you know. You have a ship over there and uh, especially when it's in the sea, it doesn't have any network connectivity. And it doesn't really host a web application also. But what's really happening is it's running AI workloads, which is looking at the real-time information of weather, the tides, or you know, the crews, and giving real-time information to the captain of the ship. And we have to really focus on this network isolation aspect as well. Very true. And look at this mission control use case, when AI models are used in the medical industry. Think a scenario when this uh, work is going on and suddenly a uh, non-trustworthy container gets updated the edge cluster. Well, uh, we had really three problems or three scenarios that we were discussing, right? The real-time processing became a real constraint and we had the isolated network and the security which is really important. And we also mentioned that the inference, the AI inference which is really happening, it's important that it happens at the edge as well in the scenarios that we showed you. It doesn't happen somewhere in the cloud. You know, you can't really wait for that long. You cannot wait for the network connectivity. Exactly. So by those use cases, you must have seen that edge clusters are not always connected uh, with the uh, public cloud or network. Also, they are, there are requirements when you have to keep um, upgrading your data models, you have to keep upgrading your workloads, uh, live and even, means you have to deploy them. Um. Yeah, we have also seen use cases where it had to be single node clusters. Uh, I know using the word single node and cluster don't go well together, but let's assume that it's a single node uh, device that you really have. And defining high availability for this use case, what does high availability for this use case? Yeah. You, you must have seen as the first use case that it's a traffic signal. You will not have the luxury of setting up a high available Kubernetes cluster. Most of the edge compute uh, for the AI use cases at the data sources are minimalistic setup, like a single node master, which is working as a worker also, and then it is doing the data processing, inferencing, and all. 
Yeah, let's look at the federation architecture. So federation is not new, which we bring here. It's 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 a well solved problem that you have uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters behind the federated cluster. You deploy your uh, um, CRDs or CRs to the federated cluster, which takes care of pushing the data to all the um, uh, Kubernetes cluster which are behind the federation. Unfortunately, all the use cases which talk about does not have luxury of all the features like network connectivity. It has to be secured. Uh, it has to be always uh, processing the real at the real time. In that scenario, how we will update the data, update the workloads or data models running on the edge control. So here we talk about uh, this architecture, which is not push based. It is more of a pull based architecture. In this, we have a federator cluster. This federator cluster has a namespace and workloads are running on that. This is a namespace ABC. Then you have the edge controllers. These edge controller, uh, edge cluster, which has multiple controllers running on that. One of the controller is the federation controller, whose main responsibility is to watch all the CRs or CRDs submitted to the federation controller. As when, as and when the network uh, re-establishes, it downloads those. Uh, CRs and uh, CRDs and create a local representation of those CRs. There is another controller called H controller, which does, it performs the action on the new submitted request and create the final objects for that. Well, uh, to help you understand in simpler terms, uh, assume, you know, I'm a teacher and you're all my students. Instead of writing the homework in each of your individual notebooks every day and asking you to finish it, I would just write it on a notebook and ask you to copy it. So in a real world analogy, I believe that fits better That's into this architecture. That's a fantastic example, I believe, which all of you can correlate that. You just write on the uh, board and all the students can make a note of that. However, I would like to bring up a very interesting question here. How do you expose services from the edge to the outside world? So let's say, you know, I resume my network connectivity, but and I want to really export some of the really important information like the logs, the help metrics, the monitoring, or what really happened in the cluster. How do I really expose these services? Yeah, that is another challenge which we are going to talk about later. So as uh, Madhu mentioned that you may have to expose your services outside the cluster for a number of reasons, uh, health metrics, log collection and all. In this uh, example, we are talking about a middleware where um, most of you uh, in your day-to-day -day work must have used the reverse tunnel. When you connect to a private cloud setup on the AWS, you have to use the bastion connectivity. Or your uh, on data center, you use the jump boxes. There, we use the same concept in, in this design, your edge cluster, which is running the edge controller, is responsible to create the reverse tunnel and open all the ports for services which are running inside that cluster. These ports are opened up and a reverse tunnel is set up for the federator cluster, federation cluster where your SSH server pod is running. And this SSH server pod is responsible to expose these services behind load balancer. So when outside user connects to the federated cluster, this federated cluster can expose the services and the data which it is requesting for. The, the important thing to note here is the network boundaries. Uh, I would like to remind that we don't have a luxury of push or getting query, uh, query to the edge clusters. We have to pull the data. So. Right, so you know we have been talking about uh, edge deployments. So let's also look at a use case where AI federated learning use case could also be solved. So for people who do not know what federated learning is, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say I have five nodes and I ask these five nodes to train the data continuously and you know update the models, but it's very local to them. The models are pretty local. And now I want to build a combined model. So from these individual models which have been generated. And this is the concept behind the federated learning. And how it essentially works is pools all the nodes, combines the models, and writes a new model, and then pushes back the updates. That's the important process. How do we really solve this with, you know, using the reverse SSH uh, proxy architecture? It's pretty much the same. So what we also did was, with the same intent, we introduced a service mesh. In the service mesh, the init containers update the IP tables. 
So essentially, an application developer doesn't really have to focus on you know, routing his data to certain federation clusters. He doesn't have to even have the configuration to do it. All he would do is forward his data to a local host, local port, and you know, at the infrastructure layer based on the business rules, we would be configuring these endpoints using the service mesh. And uh, there are a lot of available solutions in the market on the service mesh you could explore. And that's really interesting. As an application developer, I don't have to worry about infrastructure. I will just send the information to the local host at some port, and it always be like that. So, yeah, we spoke about AI workload deployments on the edge clusters. We spoke about how we can expose the services outside the edge clusters, how we can uh, use the service mesh uh, uh, to actually send the application data and forward it to the federator cluster and finally consume it. But that's it. Uh, is, is edge computer still primitive, Madhu? Uh, yeah, that's a very difficult question to answer because uh, we have to define a lot of things about what really high availability means. You know, I can have refrigerator at my home, which is really a smart refrigerator. And do I mean that I have two refrigerators in case one goes down? <laughs> and so we have to really define what high availability means. And also about backup and restore. How do we really do it at the edge when there is no person who is really specially trained to perform this activity just sitting there doing it? So what is the real concept about backup and restore? So we have to answer these. Very true. And edge clusters are very minimalistic, single node clusters. What if a lot of data is coming there? How will we load balance? We don't have luxury of adding more nodes. In fact, uh, um, if you want to reconfigure the workloads which are deployed at the edge, uh, edge from the security perspective is very sensitive. Uh, you have to even restrict the uh, cluster administrator access. Uh, you're not allowed to give them SSH access. So mostly the practice uh, we have noticed is uh, when the edge node comes up, it bootstraps itself. It knows what role it has to play in the Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. And then it initiates that uh, um, bootstrapping workflow. So basically, if you want to upgrade the uh, workloads, if you want to reconfigure the applications, what are the right ways to do that? And also a few things about Edge is that, you know, you may have real data sources, could be the sensors, could be the surveillance cameras, but how do you discover them and how do you, you know, configure them? And also about the sources of information, it could be the container itself which is running and it could be about the models, you know, where do I fetch this data from, trusted sources, and this has to be pretty much auto-configured so that human intervention does not cause, you know, anomalies because we tend to do errors, right? So Very true. So this is where we are looking for the community help. I'm sure that, uh, as, as I saw, a lot of people are working on the edge side. And NVIDIA is working on uh, AI workloads at the edge, uh, for the edge compute. Um, we are, this is exploring these solutions. It's an ongoing process. And we expect, are we at least looking for a, uh, a similar kind of contribution uh, if community also provide. And we, we are available uh, after this talk. You can have a chat, chit chat around it. Right. So the takeaways uh, for you are how to use Kubernetes for the edge compute. Uh, and uh, you also learned about the federator architecture, you know, which we are proposing based on uh, the pull models, you know, instead of a push model. And so please feel free to write back. So here's Vishwesh and I'm Madhusudan. Our email IDs are on the screen. So have a nice day. Thank you, guys.